At the occasion of the legal working group meeting of the Yemen in Zagreb, we made an interview uh, with Jaime Duran, who is the president of the Spanish Microfinance Association, and we asked him about the situation of the Spanish microfinance sector. First of all, please introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Jaime Duran, I'm coming from Spain. Uh, I'm a professor of uh, microfinance and uh, international cooperation. Uh, I'm also uh, one of the directors of the Inter uh, Spanish Microfinance Forum. And I have been elected uh, president of the Spanish Microfinance Association. And uh, for the last three years I've been wo working as coordinator to develop a proposal on the, for the new microfinance uh, le legislation in Spain. What are the general conditions that apply for microcrediting activities in Spain? Well, we came from from the crisis. Uh, the same banks were the, the sole uh, providers of, uh, of loans in Spain, microcredit loans. So now, we with the financial crisis, the same banks stop uh, delivering uh, loans. So now uh, we are working in order that not only saving banks or the financial uh, sector can provide loans to the people, but also the social entities. The same as in Hungary. So uh, we're taking, I remember uh, in 2012, we invite uh, a feather enterprise to, to Madrid together with another colleagues from, from Europe, and we learn from the different experience, and from there we, we develop uh, our proposal. Now, as you are the president of the Spanish Microcredit Association, can you tell me about the association's work? Well, the association's work is really to strengthen the sector in Spain. Uh, we have uh, different challenges. One is the legislation. The second is to um, to be able to channel funds from the uh, European Union, European Commission, uh, through the association, because most of the social entities in Spain don't have a critical mass uh, uh, delivering credits. So we need really to, to play this role of uh, being the interlocutor uh, with the European Commission, uh, with different donors, in order that to have a, a credibility and legitimacy in order to negotiate with them. And uh, you are also running a master's program on microfinance. Yes. And uh, can you tell me more about that? What are the main goals? What, okay. Which areas do you emphasize? Well, the most important is very practical MBA. You know, uh, the professor we invite to come is from all over the world, uh, very high profiles. But not uh, only in intellectual, but also practitioner. For example, when we explain the banking village methodology, we invite the, the person who invented it, who is uh, John Hatch. Uh, when we talk about uh, how to work in, in, in Africa, how to be a, a officer, long officer in Africa, we invite a long officer from Africa. Uh, so that's the approach, uh, very pr uh, practical. So we teach about methodologies, we teach a little bit on, on, on development theory, but then we teach on how to design uh, financial uh, uh, tools, for example, micro loans, uh, uh, leasing programs, uh, insurance different uh, different uh, tools and also how to do something that uh, I think is really really new we teach how to de uh, do the financial design of a bank make a microfinance institution is like a bank and uh, when I teach also at other universities people is uh, really intriguing because you can do a lot of MBAs on finance but no one teach you how to create a bank and that's what we are teaching we are teaching how to create a bank for the poor people Okay, <clears throat> and what kind of future do you predict for microfinance sector in Europe? Wow, a challenge. <laughs> I think that now uh, the European Microfinance Network is doing something very important. We are uh, uh, questioning the different approach for the different countries. We're learning each, uh, from each other. Uh, we are uh, working together, and that's very important because if we, the same is uh, in Spain, if we leave uh, to the politicians, uh, to create microfinance legislation, uh, probably the outcome will not be so good as we need. But if we are able, uh, according with the different approaches, learning to, to make a proposal to the European Commission, to influence the European Commission uh, on the uh, legislation that we need, we really need, not we as a sector, we as uh, people concerned for the poor people, for the uh, uh, people excluded for the, uh, uh, for the financial system, then it will be uh, really uh, what we should do as citizens. I mean, European citizens will have to work for Europe. 
we have to really influence, we have to really participate. And this role that's doing the uh, European uh, Microfinance Network is very good. And it's also helping that uh, all the networks in different countries uh, work together, co uh, question it, and learn from each other. So it's wonderful. If you were in a place of European Union decision maker, what kind of decisions would you make to enhance the sector? Okay, well, the first one is that the social entities can provide the loans for the, for the poor people. Uh, I will do different legislation, one for the non-profit, another for profit. Uh, I will uh, try to get the consensus of what microcredit is, you know, uh, because it's amazing. There are many legislation who didn't define what is a microcredit. And uh, there's a joke uh, that in 1970s there were two, uh, two tools who, uh, who were invented with the micro word. One is a microwave. Everyone knows what a microwave is, but microcredit, everyone thinks different way of what, what is microcredit. For me, that's very important, you know, because everybody wants to do microcredit because uh, it's a good, uh, uh, because uh, it's a, ma a good marketing, uh, but really, people who do uh, microcredit, it's not thinking about marketing uh, uh, on, on the social concern, no, no. It's focus on the people. You know, this, this was uh, invented or created to support the people. And banks are out of that. They, they, they are profit oriented. So what I think is a mistake is, is the word financing, microfinance. We should call it a different way because it's a different uh, way. We, we don't look for profit. We look for Profit, but on the on the on, on the people, not on, on the institutions. Institutions are focused to help the people, so it's not the bank, you know. Well, uh, probably Grameen Bank is different, but uh, it's really a social enterprise, as uh, Professor Junus uh, defined it. So uh, I think that the, the sector maybe they have two ways. One is the social way, and the other commercial way, you know. But uh, we have really to protect uh, poor people. Because uh, they are the, uh, in the most difficult situation, and if the banks or people who want to get profit of them, uh, this not the balance. I mean, uh, they are uh, very more weak in position in uh, respect to them. So it's very important to strengthen the social sector, and uh, I think that's the big challenge. So if uh, I have the, the opportunity, that, that I will do the, as the first thing. If you have anything else to say, a message to the policymakers or anything at all, please feel free to express yourself. Okay, well, the, the first thing is to thank uh, Fajer Enterprise, uh, not only for the great work that you're doing in Hungary, but also for a change. Uh, how is your legislation in Hungary? Uh, we learn a lot of, and for us it's, uh, it's a model also to, to follow. And I think that uh, uh, we're learning from each other, we enrich our visions, and it's very good that uh, through this uh, e-learning program that you are developing, uh, you can teach more the, uh, more the people, because it's very important that people don't look uh, to finance as a profit-making uh, uh, area. It's also a, a way uh, to support people, a way where people can, uh, can really develop all their rights and uh, all their potential. And uh, microfinance is, uh, is a new tool, and people have to understand it and to support it, to, to really uh, support the development of any country, Hungary, Spain, and the European Union. Thank you. Welcome.